for us, it never felt like vacations. It was just a way of life. And that yeah. was kind of the start, I think. When you... I would say that. And it was also the start of us realizing where there's a will, there's a way. That if we have a goal, we can do it. And, and it's um, instead of one day, make it day one. Day one. Yeah. We, we believe in the law of attraction and not the mm. part where you like just say you want something and then you get it. Like, no, you got to work your butt off for it. You have to yeah. have a plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But that's what we do. How about the kids? I mean, the both of you, obviously, you're, you're in the game, you're in the zone. How about the yeah. kids? Because you're always moving around, traveling, and guys, the places that you're going, it's not, you know, it's really from very far, different parts of the world. How are they coping up? We love traveling with the kids. And that was something we had to really think about and consider. You have this idea that kids will go to school, you'll retire, and then you'll travel. And we didn't want to do that. And we have found more value in traveling now with the kids than we can imagine having uh, when they're grown up or, mm-hmm. you know, we're too tired to walk for 10 miles a day. I group them, you know, with the same mindset that we have, that the more we travel, the more we're growing as people and we see in them tenfold and the, the bigger we realize the world is. So every time we go somewhere, the world feels bigger to us. Have you ever encountered naysayers or, you know, negativity around you or, you know, people around you that say, why are you guys doing this? Is this something that you want to do in the long run? That's never going to work, you know, when you were starting out. So things like that. And if so, how did you cope up and how did you overcome it? Whether we're talking about online trolls or people we know personally who are naysayers, yeah. honestly, yes, there's some, but it is the minority. 99% of what we hear both online and offline is very supportive. Mm-hmm. If maybe people uh, to some extent are just humoring us behind our backs, we don't mm-hmm. know, but no, family, friends have been supportive, interested. Yeah. I think Some have said that they've been inspired and they've started to move into that kind of a lifestyle also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I would say that when there's negativity, it's, it's almost always about them more than it's about us. Something that's going on with them, their relationship to what we're doing is different than what we're actually doing. So we don't take it personally if we ever do come across that. I'm excited. And I know our listeners and viewers are excited to know how to make money. This is very uh-huh. important, guys. You mentioned it a while ago. People are inspired to do the same or you know, similar to what you guys are doing. So how to make money and travel the world yeah. as a content creator. Everybody's dream now. <laughs> the yeah. part is yours, guys. Since we started taking it seriously and saying, all right, let's just start seeing every part of the world and showing that experience as family travel, um, that I think we're at about two years right now. And you mentioned 41,000 subs- subscribers. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, that was 5,000 a month ago. Yeah. You know, so slow growth for those first two years. And a lot of it just comes down to where you go. And mm-hmm. eventually with a YouTube algorithm, like if you can um, get a certain number of episodes up there and, mm-hmm. and kind of show that you're serious and that you're in it for the long haul, I think it really helps. And we hear that from a lot of other creators. But if you have a stronger niche than we have, I think it can help you to grow quicker. Yeah. Ours was just general. We're just traveling as a family. And like you said, everybody wants to do that. Why not? Right. Right. But um, in in terms of being able to make money from it, it's been a lot of in-kind compensation over the first two years. We got monetized on YouTube probably in 2021 at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But that was not even substantial until this past month. And now, I mean, it's, if things would continue even where they are right now with the YouTube ad revenue, it's a livable wage for us. So if we can Mm -hmm. 10X it from here, then that's just a game changer. And now we can actually start contributing to savings more again. It's always about growing, always be changing, of course, but always working on your content. I mean, if you see our first video to where we are now, eons apart, if you're looking to anything to change from your, your video to your next one, like just always find something to improve on every video. Should you improve your editing? Yeah. Should you improve your comfort on camera? Yeah. Should you improve your story? Of course, more than anything, most likely. Yeah. And I think therein lies so much opportunity. If you can have a unique story, not just per episode, but for your channel in general, like what is it that would inspire people to keep following you instead of just watching you, your wife get drunk off mojitos in Miami one time. For all the listeners and viewers out there, not because that I am a fan and not because that I love them, I love their family and what they do, 
it's because again you can see the authenticity that they're not just doing it for the money. You know, we're not hypocrites that we need money to continuously grow, right? But the intent, I always say this, intent comes before content. The intent is different. It's not a business. It's them having fun. It's them discovering the culture, discovering what they are doing in that place, exploring and really having fun. So you can feel that in the video. And then, you know, of course, because of that authenticity, you you that's where the the, the hits in, in the algorithm, you know, everybody loves it. Of course, it's easier said than done. But, you know, as a fan, <laughs> that's what I see. Actually, at the beginning of this, you mentioned the luxury component of our channel, which has always been a strong component for us and a bit of a differentiator. Yeah. But we've started removing that here and there from our messaging as we find that when we travel to places like the Philippines where we were just spending a couple of weeks, it's not so much the luxury side of these experiences that, that means anything to us. It's when we get into those authentic into local culture. things. And yeah. last night's Cebu City food tour, like finding our taxi driver who said, you're having trouble finding the right street foods, I'm your guide for tonight. I'm gonna take you to where the locals are. And seriously, we didn't see another Westerner that entire night. Yeah. <laughs> and that was really cool. Or when we were on our way to the, the Chocolate Hills in Bahal, and we saw them doing rice harvesting off the side of the road. And I said, I wanna see how that works. And then we just pulled over and they were teaching us how to harvest rice. Yeah. Those are 10 times more special in my mind, mm -hmm. I think for the whole family. Yeah, so than, meaningful. Than going to a fancy restaurant or staying at a fancy resort. So Love I that. think you're gonna yeah. see a lot more of that, you know, built into our experiences.